There is no better time than now to talk about the next JS13 app router, because it just became production ready and they also announced server actions. Those aren't yet production ready, but they will really improve your workflow, so let's look at both of this. So let's start off with the basic server component. This component right here doesn't run on the client, it only runs on the server, fetches the current date time from an API, and then it just returns HTML containing this date string right here. As you can see, it's really simple. We've got an async component that normally doesn't exist in React. It fetches stuff on the top level, which normally also isn't possible, and then it just returns it. And all of this works because this component only runs once on the server and is returned as pure HTML, maybe with some JavaScript if you want to render children in there, but normally just HTML. And if we take a look at this, we can see there is some caching involved here as well. Because by default, if you don't add any object in here or any content in this object, then if we check it out and reload, we will see that this number doesn't change because a fetch now by default is cached indefinitely. So basically the way that these components cache is they check, is anything dynamic in here? If so, then we will of course need caching. So you could do something like a database query in here that can of course not be cached as easily. So it will be dynamic, but because fetch is now cached by default, we will need to add either cache no store or next revalidate in here. So let's first of all try out caching. And as you can see, every reload now triggers this. But maybe we still want to cache it sometimes. So how about next revalidate, which will allow you to say, okay, I want to cache this for like five seconds. And after that, if somebody wants to call this again, then we will of course need to fetch again. So let's try that out as well. We do our first fetch, it works. We will then do another fetch, which won't work. And after five seconds, it should work again. So as you can see, it just worked again, which is amazing. But we probably also want to create code on the client. And as you just saw, server components are now the default. So let's take a look at how to create this little button right here, which just console logs a one. So as you can see, it's just a normal component. It exports a normal function, has a button with client code, and it just console logs a one on click. But as you can see, there's this used client on here. Because by default, as I mentioned, every component is a server component and you need to opt into dynamic client behavior. So if we were to comment this out, then we will actually get an error both in the compiler and also on our site, because event handlers cannot be passed to client component props. This is not really a helpful message. This one is much better, but what it basically wants to tell you is server components cannot run event handlers because they don't run client side JavaScript. And an onclick event is of course client side JavaScript. So if we want to have an event handler, then we will need to use use client. So let's just enable this again, and then our component will once again work. But of course, we can also combine it to you. So this is a little button that gets data that's fetched from the backend and then runs an onclick event again with that data. So if we just take a look at this code, we can see, okay, this is an async server component again. It fetches on the top level. We already know that stuff, but it can actually have a child that is a client component. So basically as soon as your tree becomes a client component, all the components beneath it, of course, also will need to be client components, but you can now opt into dynamic behavior like an onclick. And the data which was fetched from the server client combo component is now a prop of this component. So basically, if we just take another look, we fetch data and then we can pass it as a prop to a normal component that can then do whatever it wants with it. So basically you could actually have a component that does nothing but fetch from a database for you. And then you pass it down to your clients. And now let's get to the coolest part of it all, which are server actions. Again, these are not production ready yet, but I hope they'll be soon because they are awesome and they really improve this workflow. So if we were to just add some text in here and click this button, then you might expect that the request that was just done, as you can see by this thing reloading, was JavaScript. But this actually was a server side component that cannot run on clicks or whatever. So how does it work? Well, it actually uses a form and this form takes in an action. So basically we've got a button and an input inside of a form. This is a normal HTML form basically. So every input element in there will of course be sent with a form and it triggers the on click event up here. And this is a server action. So as you can see, it runs use server in here. So the server knows that it should only execute on the server, not on the client. So you could actually do database queries and all that stuff in here again. And then we just log the data we got in the console. So if you just take a look, we can see here is a form data, name is test and value is what we sent. And then we actually run revalidate path. So basically what this does, it, it tells the client, 
hey, your server components might not be up to date, maybe you recheck with me that these things should rerun. And that is why when we click this button, we actually see the date up here updating. This is not a full page reload. It actually only reruns the dynamic parts that need to be revalidated. So Next.js handles all of this for you. It handles the request that is done. You don't need JavaScript for that. It handles the event that comes back from the request. You don't need a user fact for that. It handles the updating of data. Again, you don't need a user fact for that. All of this is done automatically, which is just pure magic in my opinion. And it really reminds me of how TRPC works, for example, because the client code actually takes the burden off of you of actually making fetch calls. And when we use server actions in a pure client component, then we will get to this even more. So let's check that out. And this is basically the coolest part of it all. So as you can see, we once again got this used client. So this is not a server side component. And then we have a transition here. We'll get into that shortly and a value. And basically when we click this button, we will increase the value, but we will also inform the server about this. So as you can see, we got this like bit right here. If we just take a look at it, then we can see use server. This is a server action. So what this enables us to do is to now basically just call this like any async function and do the request this way. So it will do the fetch and all of this for you, just like a TRPC app would basically. And then you can actually even get a return value, the revalidate stuff we had with the action before, all of that. The only thing that you need to keep track of is to put it in a start transition. And that's because this would prevent your site from continuing to work because it would stall the app as long as this request hasn't gone through. So using start transition, we can actually keep all the interactivity of your site while this request is going through. And as you can see, what will happen when we now press the button is that we increase this by one. We actually lock our previous value to this console right here. So if I click more, then we can see I like it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we of course also increase our local state because this is a client side component. And the return value from our action is actually console locked as well. So this is an amazing way to basically send data to your server and back to your client. And using something like the revalidate we saw before, we could actually also automatically reload some stuff on the client right here. Right now we aren't revalidating. So this data here, for example, is not updating. But if we were, then everything on here would also update automatically, which is just pure magic in my opinion. It's just amazing. And the way that all of these things are integrated into each other really impressed me. But unfortunately, server actions aren't production ready yet. Sure, the app router is, but if you still need to fetch data, then maybe check out this video, where I'll show you how to use GraphQL with React, which might be a good replacement until server actions become production ready. Have a good day.